The next thing we're going to talk about is going to be 5-axis deburring. Uh, this is a new tool path. Uh, you'll find this for 3, 4, and 5-axis. Uh, in today's example, we're going to be doing some 5-axis deburring. And we'll also talk about some uh, workflow you can utilize in order to make it easier to uh, iterate your tool paths. There's a lot of settings with four and five axis tool paths and the new copy with geometry feature is a great way to iterate your, your settings and see the impact the changes have on your design. Okay, so here is our next example. So I wanna I want talk about deburring, uh, five, uh, three axis, four axis, five axis deburring. This is super useful. Uh, I've had requests on this for a long time in a variety of different application, cross holes, you know, 3D edge breaks. Um, and uh, it was always kind of a, like you would use more between two curves or parallel curves and uh, it was a hit or miss or a manual edit. It wasn't very automated. Uh, but you could get it done. Uh, the new deburring really makes it quite a bit easier, and I want to make sure that we understand some key takeaways, right? So the first thing is you'll notice that this part doesn't have any chamfers uh, modeled on it, okay? In some ways, that may be the preferred method uh, where you can drop a shape really quick. Don't worry about trying to transition a, a fillet or a chamfer between there. You can use just these edges themselves. Now, that sounds great if you're in control of the, of the design, but if you're not, then, you know, what do you do? There's already a chamfer or a fillet or a radius on the part. Uh, can you still program it? And the answer is yes. Uh, the, you would select the geometry uh, the same way. The difference is you do need to make sure that the chamfer or fillet that you're defining uh, in the toolpath matches the chamfer fillet that you have on the part. Okay, so in, in this case here, where I'm driving, uh, how what do I select? Okay, well, I'm gonna select the whole body. I want the entire body selected so I know that the software is looking at all of those faces, okay? And there's really two modes in here. There's automatic where it goes and programs everything for you, and then there's user-defined edges. So I find myself using user-defined, so this way I have control over what, it, what it's trying to target, okay? So you'll notice with the deburring tool path, it's gonna, it's gonna radius in, radius out, and it's going to use the ball mill, a ball mill, in order to to put an edge on the uh, to break the edge on the part, right? So <clears throat> it's doing the calculation for us, and our selection is really based on uh, selecting the entire model, okay? And then I'm picking which edges I want to break. All right. So how do we do that again? You can just uh, usually you're in the dialog. Let's get into the dialog here. So this button here, uh, this would be your part surfaces, what you would select. And again, you would choose the entire model, all right? Uh, when it says edge definition here, you can change this from auto, which it, it will find automatically to user defined, okay? So we set that to user defined. And then from here, we can just click this button and then pick what edges we wanna work with, okay? All right, once we're done, we can hit compute and it'll calculate the toolpath. Now, if we wanna change or add edges, right? Uh, you don't have to go back into the dialog. We can right click on user define edges, reselect, you know, and then pick what edges we wanna work with, okay? Now, something to consider if you're selecting edges on a face where all the edges are, would be coplanar or at the same Z level, we're gonna right click on that edge and choose constant Z. Uh, okay, uh, apparently that face may have a taper on it, so it can't use constant Z or it's not establishing that. So another method would be to right click and choose a loop selection, okay? So when using a loop selection, you have to pay attention to what edge you picked. So because you can see it's previewing, uh, it's previewing two loops. There's this inner loop here and there's this outer loop here. And the edge that I picked was this edge. So I just wanna make sure I wanna pick an edge that's part of the outer loop that isn't part of the inner loop. And by doing that, I'm able to select that edge. I'll do that again on this side. So we're gonna right click loop selection, 
and then pick one of the other edges. Okay, so we can pick uh, individual edges. We can choose constant Z as well, right? So again, uh, let's see if this one will get it. Right click, constant Z. And if it's co-linear or co-planar uh, at the same Z level, then we can select all of those at one time. All right, from here, we're gonna choose okay. Uh, so we updated our selection. Now we want to recompute our toolpath and you'll see that it, it will go in here and target those areas. So this is, you know, along the lines of these automatic tool paths, uh, they're, they're able to speed up workflows because it's handling collision checking and gouge checking and linking, um, and it can really speed things up. Now, th this is kind of, you know, one of those, you know, attractive parts where, you know, it, it, in some cases it may not be as practical for others, uh, in other cases, it is. It's really nice to be able to finish a, a good looking part uh, and deburring it is a great way to do that. And again, you can run, you'll, you'll notice like when it does these vertical walls that it's uh, tilting out of the way, right? Let's remove, reselect, let's go here and here. Okay, uh, recompute. All right, we can see it approaches, it comes in, and then it comes down. Now, here's the thing with a with a ball mill like this, you're you're not technically getting a true chamfer because it's going to have some curvature from uh, the ball mill itself. Okay, so what are some of your tooling options? Uh, if we get in here and we go to the tool crib. Uh, and something to, to be aware of, an operation, what types of tools are available to an operation. If you go to the tool crib, it'll have this tool category. These are the types of tools. So we can see end mill, uh, end mill rough, end mill finish, tapered, and lollipop. I don't believe it'll actually work with an end mill. It's got to be spherical. So it's going to be either a ball mill, an end mill, in this case, with a corner radius, a ball mill. Uh, I guess it, I'm not sure if it works with a tapered one. I haven't tried. Uh, apparently it looks so. So let's see what that does. Okay, so it's saying this is uh, not allowed. Okay, so when it comes to tool types for deburring currently, we're really talking about uh, ball end mills and we're talking about lollipops. So the lollipops you can use for your undercutting uh, and you can also use uh, it for cross holes intersections, uh, the you know the potato chip, the Pringles chip type profiles. Uh, it just does a really good job on that. Okay, um, what's coming to this? And well, it, well, what kind of tool would you want to use? Right? Uh, you know, I guess that's the question. What kind of tool would you want to use? And I think uh, an answer for a lot of people would be like a, a, a chamfer mill. You know, something that's got a, a 45 on it. So uh, there are some new updates for the tooling types that are coming for this. Uh, so you will be able to use a chamfer tool. Uh, you will be able to use um, a couple other tool types. I don't have the notes right in front of me. But uh, I, and the other thing that you can adjust too is this engagement, which uh, we'll talk about more on a later date, uh, is the engagement and where the tool is engaging, uh, which is super cool. All right. So that... Uh, that's the first part that we wanted to talk about was selection. So we're gonna use the entire model for our selection. And then in this case, I'm using user-defined edges so it can target exactly where we want. Now, the last topic on this one here has to do with multiple passes, okay? So if we want multiple passes, uh, you know, how do you establish that? All right, so if we go into here, and we go to number of cuts along edge and we change this to a different number. Okay, so now we have two. Once you change this from more than one to two or three, then you can either have it be a flat or a rounded. Okay, so you can put uh, a small radius and you can say how many passes you wanna take here. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and recompute that. Uh, what is controlling the tilt of the tool, Richard? Like as far as how it's coming in like this? Uh, there are some parameters in here because it's doing gouge checking, right? 
So you have holder clearance, arbor clearance, shaft clearance. Um, you know, so based on these clearance values, it's tilting the tool away automatically, right? Um, part of what I want to talk about here, though, uh, has to do with uh, how the output of this, okay? So I'm, I'm getting to that, but uh, hope, did that answer your question there, Richard? Uh, it's gouge checking and it's using the, the tool bodies to, to avoid. As far as this radius link in, um, it's the default link type, I believe. This uh, link, and this is these are the values, this which is the automatic arc lead type, if you're familiar with. So that's how that that's working there. All right. Um, there are some, uh, you know, when we're repositioning, if we want to use smooth corners, a lot of what's what's happening is uh, smoother transitions throughout the software uh, with all cam systems, right? So if you're on a, a retrack in a rapid and uh, if it's doing these 90 degree moves that can be harder on the machine, you can smooth these out. But again, uh, the, as far as like how it's tilting out of the way, uh, it's definitely utilizing some clearances in order to, to avoid gouging automatically, okay? Uh, so let me back up for just a second. We're talking about multi-passes here. So in this case, I'm trying to add a small radius on the part here. So I can use multi-passes. Now you can kind of see how it's going back and forth between one and the other here. Uh, we probably have some control on that. Uh, let's select it just to one currently. Uh, one inch. Okay, let's recompute. Okay, so we can see how You know, you can see how it's pretty close here. Um, uh, I need a different, uh, I don't know, maybe that's okay. So I'm using my arrows to rotate the drawing. Uh, if you guys aren't aware, you can rotate uh, 90 degrees with your arrows. What I'm looking for here you can kind of see how the proximity of these two shapes, they're definitely not colliding. Um, I'm not sure if it's hitting the thing on the bottom. It doesn't appear to be. Okay, but let's change those clearance values. Uh, let's make this 0.5. Let's make this 0.25. Let's make this 0.125. I'm trying to have a, a big impact so we can see it. I'm not sure if that's going to show me what I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay, so this actually gets into my next topic, uh, or just a running topic, how to iterate faster, how to make adjustments. There's a lot of settings to these multi-axis toolpaths, okay? And a lot of times you want to edit one thing at a time. Right here I made a change to the holder clearance, and you can see how much it, it changed the way that it tilted. Uh, but I don't have the the other one to kind of compare. So uh, one way to iterate faster is to copy with geometry, okay? So I'm going to copy this feature, and then I'm going to paste it like we normally would. The difference is, is if I recompute this, it's already set up because the geometry is associated. One of the ways you can utilize this is to program different part features, but another way to utilize it is to come in here and to make, uh, I forget what these were, they were pretty small, uh, make an adjustment to a single setting uh, at a time and be able to quickly see the impact uh, it had, right? So we can backplot this one. We can see the, the proximity here, right? And we can backplot this one. And we can see the proximity. So you can clearly see the differences very easily. And again, this is using copy and paste of uh, your features and choosing copy with geometry, all right? Uh, another useful feature here too um, is probably not the best example of it because I, I haven't gone through and selected a bunch of surfaces, but this selection uh, manager uh, allows you to save your selections. This is super useful. 
uh, because it doesn't matter. It's just whenever the geometry is selected, right? So by going back to that feature picking manager, it has that selection. I'm able to save that selection right now, okay? Uh, and then I'm able to rename it, uh, okay? And then I'm able to highlight it very quickly. This is by far one of the fastest uh, quick selection tools that you have. If you, if you haven't been using it, I would recommend it. If you have been using it, uh, let me know in the questions section. I'm curious how many are, are you guys are using it and if you like it. All right, so that is a little bit about uh, deburring, multi-passes. Uh, let me see. There's some other uh, topics here. I want to actually go through this from the beginning. So let's, uh, uh, I guess let's just, um, <clears throat> Uh, let's just start a new job here, okay? So we can start a new job. Let's put this on uh, the Haas again. All right, that's our work piece. Okay, we just want to focus on deburring, so we're going to select the model, hit calculate. That's our stock. Uh, as far as our zero position, we'll leave it where it is. And we're going to say OK. As far as our fixture, we're going to go ahead and select this as our fixture. And now we have this set up. And then for our stock, we're going to blank it out. I don't want to see the other jobs, so we'll blank that out as well. Uh, from here, we're going to go into uh, Mill Multi Axis. We're going to do the Deber option. OK, we're going to. Pick a tool. Uh, I guess I'm just going to kind of type one in on the, the fly here. That's fine. And we'll add one of these. Okay. Uh, as far as our first step here is going to be part surfaces. So we're going to select all of them. So I'm just going to window pick all of that. Uh, we're going to go from uh, automatic to user defined. We're going to pick our edges. Uh, I want to do all of these edges along this top here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try a loop, but I don't. I didn't really expect the loop to work. So I'm going to pick that one there. But I really only want these outside edges. Okay. So I'm going to select it around like this. Now this is an example of after you've gone through and selected around this, you really don't want to have to do it again, do you? I mean, not if you can help it. These are the edges. This is also where automatic is helpful because uh, you can get it to just apply to everything. Um, but in, in reality, a lot of times, this is what we end up doing is picking the edges we want to work with. Uh, a lot of people like to have fine control, and sometimes that's what it takes. So I really don't want to have to select that all again, so I'm just going to choose Save Selection. Uh, okay. Uh, from here, I'm going to choose OK. Uh, all right. Uh, check surfaces. If uh, clearance surface. Let's see. Yeah, so this... This is kind of useful too. This is where if you have some uh, clamps and you want to be able to avoid the clamping, uh, you, some dedicated fixturing or what have you, and you know where it's going to be and you want to avoid it, uh, you're able to select it, add a clearance to avoid it. Uh, from here, we can adjust the size. What, what I want to do is just go to the, the tool axis control, and we're going to just do this in three axis to begin with. Okay. Um, I'm running an i9, and I have a, uh, an older graphics card, and I have some uh, uh, as much memory as I can get into my PC, but it's a little bit older memory sticks. Um, so just something to consider here. All right, so we're getting our toolpath along some of these edges, but not along some of the others. Uh, some of this has to do with the consistency. Can uh, the same size chamfer 
a non -symm non symmetrical chamfer be generated. I don't know if that's the right term uh, along these edges. And uh, if you don't see it happening in some of those edges, that's why. Okay. Uh, the other thing we see some clearance planes. I don't quite have my clearance plane set up right, so I want to go ahead and uh, uh, take a look at that. Uh, let's go ahead and back plot this. This is showing in three axis right now, so you know it is going along and and doing a good job along that outside edge. Um, on some of these in, inside edges, it's not able to do a consistent uh, edge break, so that's where you see uh, the linking there. And then uh, the retracts, I just have it below. Okay, so this is three axis output. So if we go in here under parameters uh, and we look at what our clearance, let's see, our clearance plane. So we have automatic, let's go to automatic and compute. And that should push them up out of the way. Um, usually I like to have it set to automatic, but then I'll go in and define it to the level I wanna work at you know, based on that project. All right, so this looks a little bit better. There's some verticals here, so maybe I pick some wrong, wrong edges and you can see where it's just trying to get in there and clean that up. All right, so this is a three axis output. So if we post this now, uh, I don't have that Haas post. So let's switch this over to a different machine. Let's see this one, how that looks. Let's post that. I don't have a post for that one. Let's see if this one will uh, load up. So, rewind. so we can see, even though we have a five axis machine, we could still just cut this debarring routine as a three axis uh, edge break cycle right? Uh, so we would have all X, Y, Z moves on that one. Let's close this out. We're going to go back into here and this time we're going to change it from three axis. So when, when you're in five axis, you could do three plus two or simultaneous. So I'm going to do simultaneous uh, and recompute. And this will try to drive an X, Y, Z, A, B, <laughs> all at the same time, right? If you have it in three plus two mode, uh, then it will, like it, if it can index to a position and, and run that routine, uh, then it will do that. So this, I have some long edges there. This is cutting in three axis on the top, and then it's using uh, the five axis to get to the areas it needs to. You can notice how on the inside shapes, it's not not trying to cut in five axis because it doesn't need to, but uh, I guess I happen to pick up some of these outside holes, so it, it was able to cut that there. Let me uh, use a, a different uh, set of geometry. So I'm gonna remove this selection. Oh, I see I got that face. Um, let's go ahead and just select this face here. Uh, generally, I don't recommend face selection for edge definitions. Uh, you can get away with it if you have a single face. Uh, sometimes, uh, but most of the time I'm going to recommend picking the edges, but uh, it's just a matter of knowing what you're working with, right? So I could pick just that face because uh, all the edges are at the same Z, right? Okay. Um, or I could just pick, you know, this face here. Right, but nor you can see how it trims out the areas that it can't can't get to. Um, but I'm just going to recommend picking edges for now. And we're going to just uh, pick a few here as such. And let's recompute. And I want to talk about the three plus two versus the five axis. This is probably a, a better example for this. So if we back plot this and we see how the tool comes down and you can see this motion here, uh, that one's curved. Oh, cool. This is very helpful. See how this one's curved, goes along, cuts those. Okay, uh, let's add this one over here. Let's do this one. Let's remove, uh, yeah, let's add those there. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, let me remove this one. Okay. So, looks all right. Let's back plot this. So we come down, you can see it cuts along that curve there. Okay, it's going to clearance, moving over, cuts along there in three axis, comes up to this one. You can see this tool motion here, right? And then it's coming down here. So what mode do you think that is? That would be in the five axis output mode, the simultaneous, right? You can see it based on its motion. Let's switch it to three plus two. Okay, and recompute. All right, and then let's back plot this. All right, so this one on this edge, you can see how it kind of normalizes. See how the tool doesn't tilt as it goes along there? All right, this stays the same for this section. Same thing, you can see how the tool normalizes as far as its rotation on same thing here. All right, so you can kind of see the difference of the output. Again, a, a great way to iterate is you can just copy with geometry and paste, you know, change the output method to the other kind, recompute, all right? And then now you have these two side by side. You can look at them side by side. You can iterate one thing at a time. It makes it uh, really easy to be able to uh, iterate faster, okay? All right, so... Uh, I kind of, you know, looking at these links, I'm like, hey, could I get the links down a little bit lower? Um, the link I do have set to automatic. I'm going to try uh, a blended uh, spline here, clearance blended spline. Uh, actually, let's go, let's go back to this one here and let's use the smooth corners. All right. So it's going to reposition from one side of the part. And what we're doing is as it goes to this reposition here, you can see how one has the smooth corners and one doesn't, right? So that is prior to smooth corners. This one is after smooth corners. No smooth corners, smooth corners, okay? So that's kind of cool how that does that, but we want to, I don't want it up there so high, right? Uh, it's out of the way. So let's turn that off and links let's go to blended spline and recompute okay so now you know what is it doing you know it's linking between those two areas with a blended spline and the idea here would be to reduce the travel between them all right pretty cool uh those are my topics for Deburring again, selection we talked about. Uh, we want to select the entire model. Um, I'm recommending, like, again, you can use the automatic. Uh, you can use the automatic, and then, uh, like, if you have automatic, then you can also say exclude. And, and I didn't show that. Uh, and then with the automatic, you can also have adjustments as far as like what it finds. Uh, in the automation level, uh, just from a user, my personal perspective, just utilizing user defined just made the tool path easier to work with to start. And then from there, you know, I'll explore into the more of the automatic and, and, you know, how you can utilize these settings in order to detect what you want automatically versus doing it manually. But as far as like get up and go, uh, this is a great way to go. And again, uh, if you do the automatic, okay, so we'll do uh, if you do the automatic, then you have uh, exclude edges. So you can say cut everything and, and just avoid this. All right. So again, select the whole body. Uh, I'm recommending user defined and pick what you want to work with initially and get familiar with that. Okay. As far as the tooling options, you got to be working with spherical tools. So that's a ball mill uh, or a lollipop cutter. And uh, chamfer, chamfer tools is coming soon among, uh, among some other settings that I think are, are really helpful for positioning the tool along the edges. All right. Uh, the last one is multi-passes. If you want multi-passes, you have to change this number here to multiple passes, and then you can tell it whether it's flat or rounded. Okay. 